You play poker, which has been a male-dominated field for such a long time. What got you into something that it, um, so few women have had such great success in? Um, I guess I'm just, I've always kind of been one of the guys kind of girl uh, to begin with. And uh, I think the first time I found my way to a live poker table, I just recently turned 21, uh, I immediately felt at home. And, uh, you know, I, so I, I'm a little different than most women. But uh, particularly what drew me to the poker tables was that I started studying game theory when I was an undergrad at Duke. And the study of game theory is fascinating and, you know, mentally stimulating, but it doesn't make you a whole hell of a lot of money. So I was trying to figure out a way to take my game theory skills and then use them to cross over into a more marketable or at least, you know, uh, a, an industry where I could use it to, you know, for profit. And poker made a lot of sense. Poker is kind of the pinnacle of all games. It's the most uh, multidimensional of all games. You have not just mathematical excellence like you have in chess, but you also have the pursuit of psychological understanding and um, the concept of bluffing, which is unique to poker. You have uh, you, there's the observational aspect of the game, watching the other opponents for physical tells. There's really a lot of different sub-games that are going on during the macro game of poker. And so I started studying the game of poker, but I wasn't yet 21. Uh, when I was 18, I started playing online at Poker Stars and uh, practicing my skills there. And then, of course, by the time I was 21 and I sat at my first live table, I quickly found um, some success in the local Indian reservation casinos. And then uh, just one thing led to another. You know, I, I started with a $200 buy-in professional tournament on the uh, World Series of Poker Circuit prelim event before the New Orleans main event um, at the World Series stop in 2005, May. And uh, that tournament had like 700 players, and I made the final table, my very first like pro level tournament. And uh, I got seven, which was for like 7,000. It was the first real bank roll boost I had. From there, I made a couple more final tables in the vicinity of around 20 grand. And then I kind of took a shot. I sold the shares of myself to play in the $25,000 buy-in main event in 2006 uh, of the, the, the World Poker Tour Championship event. And I pulled seventh off in that event for 262000 which was pretty huge at that point. And then since then, you know, things have kind of just been taking off. I signed the deal with Poker Stars, and uh, one thing has led in, into the next, and I'm, I'm glad to be enjoying the ride. And do you still keep in touch with any of your classmates, and what do they think when they see you on TV, you know, uh, after being in class and studying the same things? Yeah, of course I keep in touch with them. You know, I'm actually still in law school. I, uh, I just completed my exams in May, right before heading to the World Series, so that's pretty stressful. But, um, so yeah, I, I do keep in touch, and, and what do they say about seeing me on TV? I think it's pretty funny, you know, they're like, that's you, they just, it's kind of all surreal, you know? Uh, but, yeah, it's just like, you know, anything else. Um, when you get success in a way that's publicized, you know, um, you're, I'm lucky that I had a good group of original friends who know that those people are in your circle because they're your real friends, you know? And uh, so I'm proud to still have good, good relations with a lot of my own friends. And do you see your future more in the poker world or in the legal area? Definitely in the poker world. That's not to say I won't use my law degree. Probably will. Uh, in a less traditional sense, more so to understand, you know, the contracts that I'm signing with different uh, sponsorship deals and things like that. Uh, maybe to do a business thing, you know, having a law degree helps with that. But probably unlikely to see me practicing in the formal rigors of a law firm. So you've been um, on tour, I guess, for about a year now, or just under that. What has been maybe the most important or most shocking thing that you've learned? Well, you know, poker's glorified a lot on television, right? And one of the things you don't see are the lulls that happen in between the big wins, the final tables, you know? Even Phil Ivey, one of the hands-down best players in the world, will go sometimes 10 tournaments in a row without cashing, but you don't see that. All you see are the moments at the top. And so, when you're a newbie in the industry, and you know, for the first time you're confronted with the downside of, the, of a professional poker career, it can be it can be wearing on you psychologically, and uh, it's been an adjustment for me to accept that I'm not going to win every tournament that I play. I had you know tremendous fortune in that I won a tournament my first year on the circuit. I won the $5,000 buy-in for got it open on the WPT circuit in September, and uh, that was a pretty big one too. It was almost $300,000, and it was. Um, the sort of thing that a lot of pros can go the whole entire career 
without a first place win. And I was really, really lucky to get that so early on. So uh, that win, luckily, you know, has helped me kind of pull through some of the lulls. You know, I remembered, I was like, look, I had a lot of fortune early on in my career, so I'm going to have some dry spells. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's all work in progress, trying to get better. And do you think that um, people play you differently at the tables because you're a woman or because of your sex appeal, or do you think that they play you the same way as anyone else? Uh, well, you know, let's face it, I'm a girl, and we all know girls can't play poker, right? Uh, I'm young, and young players are inexperienced, and I'm blonde. And we, there's certainly enough blonde jokes out there that uh, we know what the world thinks of blonde people. So, you know, when I sit at the poker table, uh, not really that high of expectations, you know, from the other players concerning the moves that I'm able to pull off. And that works to my advantage. Uh, for opponents that haven't played with me before, I can get away with some of the more complicated moves that I'm not really given credit for being able to pull off. And uh, people think I play a lot more ABC than I actually do. And uh, yeah, that, that's to my advantage um, at the table service. So when you play online then, do you find that people play you the same way or is it a totally different game for you? Uh, when I play on the internet, you know, now people generally know that I'm on Team, team Poker Stars. My name says Lady Maverick in it, and so they also know that I'm a woman. But, uh, you know, it's just hard to say because I'm Poker Stars, um, I'm advertised as being on Team Poker Stars, people play me, you know, they really want to bust me because they want to say that they busted me, you know, from a tournament, something like that. But, uh, People play also a lot more aggressively online than they do live because there's a lot less culpability for the moves. You know, you don't really have to stand up to anyone and justify why you play the, a hand a certain way. And so I'll get a lot. I'll deal with a lot more aggressiveness at a live at an online poker table as compared to a live table. But I can't really say whether or not that has anything to do with my femininity or not. And do you feel any animosity from other players that feel that you get extra attention because you are a young woman in the sport? Um, sometimes, you know, that's a reality in, in anything. When, when you have success and you're young or you're different somehow than everyone else, of course you'll, you'll hear that. Uh, but, you know, like I said, uh, I have almost a million dollars in earnings and uh, won a tournament in my first year on the circuit. I think my results should speak for themselves. And, you know, so I just, I'm a confident person and uh, I just, when people say things like that, I just, you know, try to wish them the best and, uh, and remind myself, you know, that uh, I'm doing everything I can do and constantly trying to be a better player and a better person and that's really all that's in my control. And I think that um, you had a public uh, kind of altercation, I guess, during the World Series that might have had something to do with, you know, you being a woman or something. And um, what, do you, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned that the World Series is definitely both, um, it has something about it that's both a blessing and a curse, and that is that uh, it brings together people from a wide variety of backgrounds and an extremely wide variety of uh, poker experience levels and live playing experience levels to a poker table. And, um, you know, for better or for worse, some people, uh, you know, are familiar with some of the more, uh, the formalities, the, um, the expectations about behavior at the tables, etiquette, how you're supposed to act when you're sitting at the table. And while it is subjective to a certain point, there is a line that shouldn't be crossed. And, uh, you know, I understand that people get really stressed out during the time. There's a lot of money on the line. There's, uh, you know, braces on the line. I certainly love to win braces myself, so I understand what that feels like. And it can cause people to act in ways that's out of character for them or out of the ordinary. And uh, it's probably what happened that day with this kid. Um, he was probably having a bad day. Uh, you know, so it's been a few weeks now, and uh, I've completely let it go, forgiven him, and uh, you know, I wish him the best, and uh, I hope to uh, continue to, uh, you know, have success at the tables and allow that to speak for itself. And what advice do you have for other young women that are thinking about getting into poker? Uh, let's see, young women, um, practice on the internet. If you're uncomfortable seated at the table and, and you know, uncomfortable with the attention that you certainly will get being a woman and standing out from everyone else at the table, uh, practice your skills online first so that you get all the mechanics of the game down so you're not worried about, you know, how much am I allowed to raise, how much, you know, what, is, what are my options here. If you're concerned with those sort of things, it's going to make the other stuff that much more frustrating. So you want to simplify things for yourself when you sit at the line table you want there to be nothing else you have to worry about but just playing your A game. And so one of the best ways to do that is to practice online. Obviously practice online at Focus. Alright, thanks a lot, Vanessa. Best of luck in the future.